invite everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to the November 16th meeting. And I apologize. I'm wearing my jacket, but I feel like I'm frozen to death here today. But. Uh, not that I'm not having the, I, I did feel the temperature go up a little bit. Thank you. The uh, Commissioner Brumall will not be here today. Will she be online? I don't know if she'll have the opportunity to. She, uh, if she can, she will. But that's right now. Then. Okay, very good. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of November 2nd? So moved. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing that all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Financial report and payment of bills. Should we have a motion to approve the financial report? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the financial report? Uh, I was looking at the, uh, Steve, I was looking at the statement of revenues and, and expenditures. Uh, the real quick question uh, on the other taxes uh, we received. Uh, about one fourth, maybe one fifth of the dollars that we sent out. We did do all the buildings. Uh, yes, we are, they are currently being built. They are built during the course, course of the year. So. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So what was Steve's last statement out of there? He said he said they were built during the course of the year. So okay. we're, we're current with our building. Very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, next up on the agenda, it is now 12.03. Uh, we're going to have a public hearing on annexation A4-2022. Uh, Lou, do you want to read this in, or is Jean, are you going to read this in, or about the public hearing, or is Mrs. Angela... Maitman? Maitman. Are you here? Are you on, you're on the... Uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. So you're representing Perch Creek Properties, uh, owner of the property in located in the 3rd Election District, Cecil County, identified on Cecil County Map 33C, parcel 0669, consisting of approximately 37.726 unimproved acres and further described in the Cecil County land records in... Lieber 4887, folio 0199, and it's presented for adoption. Uh, Jean, can you give me the uh, update on this? Uh, sure, the Elton Planning Commission at the regular meeting on November 7, 2022, further request of Angela Maidman, Vice President of Cor Corporate Real Estate for Essex Express Lines, representing Perch Creek Properties in their request to annex the following parts of the land. Tax map 033C, parcel 0669, consisting of approximately 37.73 acres. The parcel is currently zoned RM, high density residential, under Cecil County zoning, with the proposed Elkton zoning classification of BI, business industrial. No one in attendance at the meeting spoke for or against the annexation request. On October 18th, Cecil County Council voted to approve resolution 60-2022 which grants consent to the change in zoning of this parcel to be annexed. Maryland Department of Planning in their November 2nd, 2022 letter did not vote, did not note any concerns with the proposed annexation. The Elkton Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of the annexation request contingent upon cooperation with Cecil County Emergency Services for access to Maloney Road if necessary. No other access to Maloney Road is intended by the developer or the purchaser. Very good. Uh, this is a uh, public hearing. Does anyone on the board, first of all, have any questions or comments in regards to this uh, annexation? Does anyone on the floor have any questions or comments in regards to this annexation? Miss Angela Maidman, do you have any uh, comments or questions that you want to raise to us or add to this? I'm mean, happy to just give a little um, brief explanation of uh, what we have going on there in Elkton. Um, we've been um, <clears throat> a business in uh, the Chesapeake Boulevard uh, Business Industrial Park uh, for almost 20 years. Um, we have been good corporate uh, neighbors and citizens 
Uh, as a matter of fact, we put the light in that uh, is on the main thoroughfare that leads into the business park when we did our development to help support traffic in the area. And we did most of the paving along Chesapeake Boulevard as well at the time. So we're um, thankful to be at the point that our business has grown. As you can see during the pandemic, transportation has become even more important than it has been in previous years. And uh, the growth that we've seen in the area has already led us to do a 58 door dock addition. Um, but as part of the growth there, you know, we currently have just under 27 acres. And um, we see the ability to do another dock addition and the adjoining land that had been presented to us um, by Perch Creek would allow us to build um, a maintenance facility for our equipment, which would be five bays, about 10,000 square feet with the bays and the office. And the rest would be um, paid for parking. Now, not all 37 acres will actually be developed. Um, a lot of that acreage will be left for the forestry preservation as per the requirements for development in the area, as well as wetlands. Um, we're going to work with the county on an emergency lane to take them out um, where they kind of need to go. And uh, then, and, you know, we, as far as our paving, it probably will lead us to about 800 um, and 50 um, parking spaces for equipment. But I want to make sure that everyone understands that a lot of that parking is coming from the existing lot as we've built out the truck terminal. So it's, it's not all going to be additional truck trips, etc. Also, a lot of that new equipment that will be parked um, on this additional land will be there for maintenance and repair at that shop. So we will not be going in and out every day with loads. So it's not a direct one-to-one -one type of comparative. Um, we've been excited that we've seen about a 20% increase in employment in this area since we did the 58 door dock addition. And we anticipate seeing another 25 to 30% increase if we are able to um, get this annexation and, and develop this land for our maintenance facility uh, and our parking. As we have grown um, into the size of facility that we have now, it's really important to have a maintenance facility on site to make sure everything is in good order of repair and, and safe for ourselves, our customers, and the community. Um, you know, we. We've enjoyed being there. We think this is a good community. We've got great employees, so we'd like to see our expansion um, kind of supported even further by the town of Elton by annexing this land proposal into the town. And if that's done, we anticipate being able to close on this land in the next 30 days and start presenting our plans for review um, as would be normal um, before we did any kind of future film. Thank and you. I'm open to any questions that, that there might be, uh, Mr. Mayor and, um, and the commissioners, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Angela. Does anyone from the board have any questions for Angela? Is there anyone on the Zoom meeting that has any questions or comments in regards to this annexation? Seeing none, this public hearing is now closed at 12.10. I'd like to ask the board, do we have a motion to accept the annexation? Uh, it's as, uh, annexation A4-2022 for adoption. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this adoption? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for coming back to Elton. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Look forward to continued years and years. All right. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Okay, next up we have Mr. Uh, Joe D'Annunzio, proposed uh, artesian interconnection Route 40 at Delaware Line. I guess we kind of put you on the spot with this, didn't we? Uh, that is perfectly fine. I will tell you, Al did that last week when he was here at the meeting. He said, no, we'll bring Joe in and he'll come over here and make this happen. Uh, I, think what we, I think what we wanted to, to know is just kind of where we're at with the uh, interconnect from our standpoint, your standpoint. Uh, it's great to have the whole team in here and uh, can you give us kind of what, what you think we need to do or where we're at? Or? I certainly can. Good All right. Good Mayor, Commissioners. Always a pleasure to join you. And no, Al didn't put me on the spot. That's just his job. And, and we roll with the punches every day. Uh, as you know, that we already have an existing interconnection with the town at Red Hill Road. And there's two other interconnections where we generally buy water, Bell Hill and Route 7. 
uh, as well. What's proposed here, and the agreement had been shared previously, is a second connection on Route 40 with the idea of being able to help the town assure reliability of service on that side of town, particularly as clean nanomedicine plans to open soon, uh, you're developing south fields. Uh, being in the water business, we are all too well aware that your sources of supply are fine until they have a problem. But when that well has a problem or suddenly there's a water quality issue in your treatment field that you need new water treatment, it can create a problem. And we think that for the town, this additional interconnection would be another critical component of being able to assure supply, particularly in those kinds of circumstances. The terms of the agreement are consistent generally with what we have in the existing Red Hill Agreement. Uh, the only things that have changed are things like the quantity. Uh, it would start off with a minimum 50,000 gallon a day take with a max of 200,000 gallons a day with the ability to raise that to as much as a million gallons a day with a minimum adjusting to 25% of whatever the maximum is. The reason for a minimum take is to keep water fresh because the water doesn't move when it's needed, suddenly it's not fresh. Uh, that's not the ideal operational way to, to handle those matters. So that's why we would always propose a minimum. The rate that we're proposing is exactly the same as the rate that the town pays at Red Hill Road. Uh, so no change there. And let's see, a oh, 10 year term with up to five five year renewals is what's proposed within the agreement. We understand and we've worked with KCI uh, who's done the analysis of the impact on the town system. It's really a short piece of pipe on either side of our systems that's needed, and then installing the meter ball at the state line. So in that connection, in terms of the construction, it's a relatively straightforward project. So with that, I'm open to any questions. Uh, Joe, we have a uh, construction cost estimate of $412,000. It might look in that, is that for the interconnect? Um, that's correct. And that's for uh, one of the alignment. We're, um, what, what we included in the analysis is to have the alignment running along the south side of Route 40. Um, and it really depends on the field condition, the existing utilities in that area. And uh, there could be another alternative alignment needed along the north of the Route 40. And that would be a longer run and uh, we'll need a jack and four underneath the Route 40. So okay. this, the, the one included here with the cost estimate, 415 plus, is for the shortest run. Very good. Uh, do you expect any complications with this at all, or how do you feel about this? I um, mean, what, what's our obstacles? So the first analysis we did is collected all the hydraulic information, did the hydraulic analysis. Um, the supply will be at a higher pressure than comparing to the the, the, the roof of uh, the town's holly house zone, which is the zone to receive the water from the proposed uh, connection along Route 40. Um, and, and so we did a further analysis, which is included in the memo submitted to the town that included the control analysis, um, what control equipment will be needed for, um, for keep the pressure and, and flow down to meet the agreement of what is proposed in agreement and also to not impact the town system <coughs> operation, mainly not to overflow the, uh, the, the Thompson Tower and mm -hmm. not impact much on the well three. Um, a control valve will, will need to be Im implemented as, as, a, as a necessary component and with the controller and also control panel. Uh, there also need to be certain type of communication between the, uh, the, the meter valve block uh, on the outer side. There will be two meter block, like the valve block, one on the arterial side and one on, on, on the outer side. So there needs to be some communication between the, um, the valve block along Route 40 with the Thompson Tower because we don't want to overflow that one tower. The valve needs to be shut down um, when it's approaching. So we uh, have the recommended um, equipment included in, in this analysis and uh, also included in that cost estimate. Um, so, um, so the trigger for this 
route for interconnection is mainly from the clean uh, facility. Facility to the phase three um, demand is projected at 250,000 gallons per day. Um, and uh, we, we, we have a latest schedule from them. So they have, uh, looks like their phase one um, is anticipated to be in place in early 2023. And that, that has a water demand of 20,000 gallons per day. And their phase two um, is looking to be in place in late 2024 um, and early 2025. And the, the water demand in that phase is 50,000 gallons per day. And the town system currently has the, has the capacity to meet the demand in phase one and phase two. And their phase three, uh, which is the, the final build lab, um, they're looking at that um, approximately will need a demand of 250,000 gallons per day in summer in 2027. Um, and then that's, that's after their, their phase three completion and so we that. Um, so for this, for the town system to meet this demand plus the future, uh, future demand in the, um, from the, from the currently in construction south field, and the town would need additional water source to meet all these demands. Um, and uh, um, the, the proposed Arcadian supply along with 40 would be a convenient uh, backup supply to provide additional water to the town and also serve as a backup uh, for emergency situation in case uh, the town needed. Um, however, for the long long term, just uh, um, looking at the entire town system and the uh, existing demand and future demand, uh, we do recommend the town continuously exploring uh, your own water resources on the uh, 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 like within the town town limits, and uh, um, so in order to be more self reliable and uh, and more self sustainable. Thank you. <coughs> One of the things that we're going to to know about is in conjunction with this, there's a force main a construction on the Epic uh, Boulevard also. Yes. Because you can't just keep pumping water into the system and you get rid of the wastewater. So that's a project that I think you're working on the specs now on that. Yeah, that's right. So um, there's two like uh, two, di two types of demand. So we just talked about the water demand and the other is the sewer demand. Um, and that will require their phase one and phase two, um, to accommodate their phase one and phase two, we're currently working on upgrading the existing horsemen um, at the Chesapeake Boulevard pump station. Um, and uh, that is in the permitting phase, but we're done, we're done with design. And right now, we, we submitted our final sign uh, copy of the construction documents to MDE and uh, they're doing their final review and we anticipate the permit will be issued shortly and we can start the building phase and construction phase for that one. Um, and we anticipate construction can, can start, uh, the building and the construction phase can, can start like early next year or later this year. Um, and that should be handle all the proposed flow from phase one and phase two from green facility. Um, in order to accommodate the, the fifth rate, and that will require, also require the, um, the Chesley Boulevard pump station upgrades. And when we did the design for the first man, we had that into consideration. So um, the first man is, will be capable for the, for the future pump station upgrades before the, the fifth rate can be, um, will be, in, will, uh, will, will be fit from there and, and then Started to distribute um, this water to the council. Do, do we have an estimate on that yet? Uh, for the first man? First man. We have a preliminary <coughs> estimate for that. And uh, um, and right now, because that, is, that first man is um, at that certain section, it, it, it'll be mainly construction by direction, directional drill um, to, uh, to minimize the disturbance <coughs> to the test people word. And some of the sections, because there's already um, multiple utilities 
along the path. So at some 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 of the section, the first thing needs to be at the deeper depths. And, and right now we have a preliminary cost estimate around eight hundred thousand uh, dollars for that whole thing. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you. Lou, what do we need to do to move forward with this? Well, I think that uh, <coughs> on the uh, artesian side, they probably want an agreement. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. because uh, they're not going to initiate their construction on their end without an agreement. So if you want to start that, that process with artesians, we'll actually have the board should review or have council yeah. review the agreement, which is very similar to the original agreement. How does the and board then, uh, feel about that? I'm good. I'm on it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're good. So let's go ahead and uh, review exactly what you were saying. Review right. the agreement. Right. Thank you. And, and I would say that uh, uh, how important these interconnects are, uh, and, and, and I'm going to try to give a little history, and sometimes when I give history it may not uh, be the exact, but my understanding that municipalities over 10,000 people had to have a, a backup water supply source to 25% of their daily use. Is that correct in saying that? Well, my recollection was that MDE sold the town at one point. You needed to have a backup source of supply sufficient to meet the town's demand should your surface water plant not be able to operate. That's, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. That was there. Okay, and that's why these interconnects are so important. And, and I'll use, uh, I can actually use three examples of why it's so important. Uh, two years ago, maybe three years ago, we had our pumps went out at the Red Hill Reservoirs and uh, we needed to use the interconnect on a daily basis to make sure that we provided water uh, for our residents. I mean, it was, uh, it was a, uh, a, a real huge shock to us, but it was important to have that. But secondly, when we have uh, uh, the floods that we have in Elton, which we'll kind of talk about a little bit today, and that flood water comes down, and uh, we can't even treat that water that goes to our water plant because it's uh, so muddy, right? And uh, we have to shut down our plant, and then that's another reason why we would pull that. And just recently, we've been doing the UV upgrade. Set our plant down to install UV disinfection equipment. So, so fully yeah. now, when we get to that agreement, we're going to ask for a huge discount with all the volumes, of course. So, John, make sure you fill all that in because we want to make sure we get that. But, uh, Joe, it's been a, a very important relationship with Artesian, and uh, I think that. Uh, uh, this interconnect will be on its way here soon. Very good. We appreciate working with the town. Uh, Lewis, if you need a copy of the most recent version, just let me know. But the last one was when we made the change on the application of Maryland state law at your request. Okay. If, if you need anything, just give a shout. Absolutely. And you know, as I recall, when we talked about that interconnect issue, I think the town and all of us sitting there, we were very skeptical because we were going in foreign land. I don't think we understood it particularly then. We do understand it now, but it was, it was something new. It was not. Uh, it was worked out. No. And again, we appreciate being able to assist in working with the town. I think it works for all of our benefit in the end, so we're glad to be part of that. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Always got a mess with me. Couldn't beat him in basketball, so I'm trying to be on my That is what you told me. Okay, next up we have uh, resolution R10 2022, Cecil County Hazard Mitigation Plan Adoption. Uh, we've got uh, John Donahue, Deputy Director, Cecil County Department of Emergency Services here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the plan adoption. Mayor, Commissioner, thank you for uh, having us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, I'm actually going to kind of dump on our new emergency planner, uh, Michael Burke, uh, who's going to uh, at least introduce the plan, uh, what it's about, and what it means to the, the council, and then we'll open it up for fun. Thank you. Look, Michael, again, 
Good afternoon. Thank you for having this opportunity. Uh, a little background on me. I'm, I'm a fairly new position, but for the most part, uh, I grew up here in Upton, actually, so it's kind of nice to see familiar faces. Uh, still live in Cecil County, so it's very nice to have the opportunity here as emergency planner. So hazard mitigation plan is something that we have to do for uh, FEMA every five years. And this turn is why we're coming to the local municipalities for the adoption. This process has been in the works since uh, almost a year ago, since March of 2021, where we went around again and we were trying to get input from local towns and municipalities. So part of this hazard mitigation plan is starting at the local level, and then we are kind of like a mediator between the state and the local municipalities, identifying threats and hazards as well. So if Mary mentioned one of the floods, and that is one process we got. Historically, Cecil County is known to have floods quite a, quite a bit <clears throat> in certain areas. Uh, so we want to be mindful of that. So. Um, just to give you a quick historical information, um, in the years past, from federal declarations, from 2012, when we had Hurricane Sandy, 2011, Tropical Storm Lee, uh, just to give you an idea of that it has occurred and could occur. Um, so we're here today to request for the adoption of this plan. This plan incorporates the whole county and also includes specific municipalities as well. So we want to include all municipalities on this hazard mitigation plan. And the conclusion of this adoption, we will come back again in another later time for our starting the new hazard mitigation plan, which is gonna be revamped for another five years. So that's what we're here today to do. And then we also want to come back out uh, from my position and be more of a mediator connecting between the local municipalities and us, not just on an emergency need basis, but more closely connected. So that is our goals. Uh, we want to try to do future projects uh, of working on our continuum of operations plan, our emergency operations plan as well, and then increase our interface, like I mentioned before, increase exercises as well, introducing new faces post-COVID type exercise related to the emergency operations center and doing more of our mass communications and understanding of that before emergency occurs. Perfect. Uh, I did have one question. On page 150 of the, of the plan, there's some language here I don't quite understand exactly what that means. It says uh, free board requirement. What does free board mean? Help me understand that one. You might have your thumb, but. Uh, it has a check by her name. Oh, I got Jean Minner back here is going to tell me what it means. I, uh, in our um, floodplain ordinance, Yes. if you're going to build in the floodplain, uh, then when you build, you have to uh, have the lowest finished floor um, two feet above freeboard. So there's a there's the highest level we anticipate flooding to occur, the lowest finished floor has to be two feet above that. Understand to prevent damage. Yeah, well, there was one. I, 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 I just clicked as soon as she started saying that because we just had to tell us some floats up in Rising Sun uh, in a trailer park, and they were talking about repairing or uh, rebuilding the trailer park. Mm -hmm. Well, free board would have to be 11 feet in the air, which means we would have trailers on stilts. Wow, 11 feet in the air in order to meet that requirement. So that, that's Is that going to be required, required for them to do, or? Uh, well, that was built, uh, I believe, well before some of the floodplain requirements that FEMA's had. Uh, and they don't have a check by their name, I want to, look, I want to tell you. <laughs> Rising Sun does not have a check by their name. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should take the check out of Elton. I don't know. I've got to think about that one. Uh, thank you so much on that. And, and I want to also say, uh, you know, yesterday, uh, uh, Rob Maspiano and Michelle and Jean Minner, uh, and a few of the other members of the team hosted uh, the young fellow from uh, Chris. Chris and what's the name of his company? Underwood. 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 And I really appreciate you guys coming out because I think that shows the partnership that we should have. And, 
And I think that uh, we as a team can do much better things together. I, I think right. so, and, I, and Michelle and I had some discussion yesterday in reference to that, and the fact that we, you know, we need to be better partners, um, and uh, we'd like to get a group of all the municipalities for emergency management together, uh, so that we can share what we have. For example, we have our code red, um, and perhaps we should be using that. We don't want to be crying wolf. So that's our, our system that we, yeah. we can draw a, a line around the community and say, send them a message. Um, we don't want to use that by crying wolf, yeah. but there are probably more times that we should be using it. For example, if flood waters are coming down from Chester County, uh, we need to draw a line around up and say, start saying the bag in your, uh, your doors and, and uh, sealing up all of the holes yeah, because yeah. the water's coming. And, you know, I have to tell you, Lewis has always been real good with uh, knowing the level. At what bridge do you check? Uh, there's a uh, USGS site at Brewster's Bridge. It tells you the cubic feet per second through that site there. And, of course, half of the uh, watersheds in Chester County, so but it's raining hard up there. It doesn't even have to rain hard here to flood. Mm -hmm. No, it's a well, 52 it's square here. miles. So he does a good job of warning us. Uh, <laughs> that's our code <laughs> red. We've our threshold. Now we perhaps we can take some electronics, hook it to that uh, flow meter, and when it reaches that point, <clears throat> alerts go out to the community. And that makes sense. It makes sense. Does anyone from the board have any questions or comments in regards to this uh, mitigation plan adoption? Lou, do we have a proclamation we need to read? Well, yes. A resolution of the Mayor and Commission of the Town of Elton adopting the Cecil County Hazardous Hazard Mitigation Plan. The Mayor and Commission of the Town of Elton recognize that Elton is vulnerable to a natural hazard, which can result in economic hardship, threats to public health and safety, and the loss of life and property. And where it pursuant to Section 322 of the Federal Emergency Management Administration Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000 states and local governments are required to develop and submit a mitigation plan that outlines processes for identifying their respective natural hazards, risks, and vulnerabilities. Whereas the town of Elkton acknowledges the requirements set forth in the act to have an approved hazard mitigation plan as a prerequisite to receiving post disaster hazard mitigation grant program funds. And pursuant to the act, the Cecil County Department of Emergency Services, in cooperation with Cecil County government and officials and citizens of the town of Elton, developed the Cecil County 2022 Hazard Mitigation Plan. Whereas the Cecil County 2022 Hazard Vulnerability Assessment and Mitigation Plan recommends mitigation activities that will reduce the risk of loss of life and or property affected by natural hazards affecting Cecil County and its municipal government. Now, therefore, will be resolved, Mayor and Commission, the town of Elton hereby adopt 2022 Cecil County Hazard Mitigation Plan, including its implementation strategy. Do we have a motion to accept the resolution R10-2022? So moved. Second. So motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. your cooperation. Thank you so much. Okay, Lou, you're up next. And we have a proclamation on uh, small business. I think that's it. That's what it is. Small Business Saturday. A proclamation of the Mayor Commission of the Town of Elton Declared on November 26, 2022, Small Business Saturday now. Whereas, according to the United States Small Business Administration, approximately 32 million small businesses in the United States employ nearly 50% of America's workforce. I can't believe that with Amazon, but that's what we say. Whereas $68 for every $100 invested as a small business stays in the community versus $43 spent at non-local establishments. And whereas the mayor and commissioners of the town of Elkton support local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our neighborhoods. Now therefore, be it known that the mayor and commissioner of the town of Elkton your wife proclaimed November 26, 2022, as Small Business Saturday in Elton, and encourage everyone to support our local business community. And be it further known that these unprecedented times, it is vital that we come together as a community and support our neighbors by supporting their businesses. 
We have a motion to accept proclamation P38-2022 Small Business Saturday. So moved. Got a motion? Second. And a second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what I have in mind. Okay, very good. Uh, we had a, a multiple agenda change since Friday. We had, uh, I think, we had Elmer Justice was originally going to show up on the agenda. Uh, he called and uh, postponed, and we also had a part of Southfields that uh, wanted to postpone. But uh, in doing so, I know that Sidelines wanted to give an update on their project, and I'd like to invite uh, Mike Brown to come down and uh, give the board with Brad Carrillo uh, an update, the Sidelines group, give us an update of what's happening, and we'll hopefully give you an update of where we're at. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time and thanks for the last minute uh, change. I'm going to go ahead and try sharing now. Okay. Uh, since we. Is it going to work? There we go. You got it now. Okay. Perfect. Great. So since um, we had met last in the town and uh, Brad and I had, had committed to trying to work together to build a park, we had said that we were going to immediately start by getting a company to do a flyover render to kind of show our vision, our, our uh, cooperative vision that we've talked about now for several years, as well as do a flyover rendering that we could um, both share with prospective uh, hotel uh, operators and investors for some of the other properties that surround uh, the, the sports park. Um, that is complete with the exception of some final touches that uh, we're waiting on. And we hope to have some of your uh, impressions as well here at Stuff. So we just wanted to start with a slideshow of that um, and, uh, and kind of give you just a general idea of, of where we are. So this is an overview of the, of the sports park. I'm going to share this with you all, by the way. It will be up on our website. We'll send you a link to it. So I will show you just a few slides that give the overview, and then a video that has some music to it that we're going to uh, post on our on our video on our website as well. So um, this is a new pump house, as you can see, which we know is uh, currently constructed um, off of Frenchtown Road and the water tower that we're working on, as well as the sports park 213 being up here in Frenchtown. You can see kind of the vision for all of the the fields, the hotels. Uh, the single family homes and the apartment complex. And our hope with this is to allow people the, the idea to understand what it is we're trying to build. An all turf sports park has a huge draw in itself uh, because of people traveling from far away and not having to have canceled games because of the ability for these turf sports parks to drain a massive amount of water and for people to be able to play throughout the rain as well as right after a, a rainstorm occurs. But what separates us from everyone else is the spine of the uh, or the backbone of the um, project? Let's see here. The backbone of the project, which is just right down the center of um, of our sports park. As you guys know, and 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 as the mayor and I have discussed forever, that this has to be something that is Disney esque. When it's done, it has to be something that separates us from everyone else around us. Everyone wants to be in the sports park business. It's a, a $7 billion a year business nationally, and it's growing, but it is competitive. And we need to make sure that we separate ourselves in some way from everyone else that's around us. Um, as you um, may have seen yesterday, um, Harper County was um, once again thanking Ripken Baseball for all of the sports that it brings there, not because of the minor league team that plays there, by the way but because of all of the tournaments that is draw, are drawn there because of their, uh, their sports park. And that's one sport, baseball only. And we're looking at doing multiple sports here. And, and, and I'd like to make a comment on that number. Uh, I had a little, let's see, I had it here before you moved you on. Uh, but I believe it said it was the economic impact for generating over $47 million just for one season. Mm -hmm for the 2022 season, the, the active season. That's a lot of dollars in the community. It is, it is. And I think we can far surpass that. I truly believe that because we're going to have multiple sports. Um, th this is just a rendering of the hotel. You know, we don't have Hilton or anyone else locked in, but we thought 
uh, understanding what a Hilton True Hotel looks like and, and using that as a comparison, as a backdrop for, for what we're, we're trying to do here. We do know that Hilton True has a uh, sports park um, type of uh, design that allows for cleats and storage of sports gear. So uh, we thought it would be uh, a nice uh, hook to try to get them there if we can in the end. Uh, but for now, it's just a placeholder. We asked our, um, our architect, and, and by the way, this was developed by um, the director of architecture from the University of Penn, who has his own firm as well. We asked on our four acre plot that, that Brad and I own, where we have two acres that are committed to a hotel, we said, listen, what could we do that's interesting outside of the box for the other two acres? Because we don't want it to just be a parking lot. They came up with an idea, we said, you know, an open air market or a, a food court or something like that. And this is what he came up with, and we thought this was an outstanding vision. It gives us a, a place that we can either operate or lease to whatever food vendor or whatever type of, of business we think would attract the most, depending on the venue that's going on, or excuse me, the tournaments that are going on at the time. But we thought that this was an interesting play of kind of an outdoor theater, uh, similar to what you see maybe at Baltimore Harbor, where you have the steps that go up, where we could have live music, where we could have people come and, and kind of get away from the sports park, but stay in the town of Elkton, where we continue to keep the economic driver here in the town instead of uh, in the rest of the county or the state that we can. Kind of another view of that, of the backdrop of the hotel. This is what separates us from everyone else, and this is the backbone of our, of our project. You know, we have a 650 feet long total. When you look at it, it's, a, uh, it's 50 feet wide. It's two and a half stories. It has the open air market that you can walk through as the first layer. The second is a, an air conditioned uh, glass enclosed uh, space that can either be leased or used for uh, corporate events or uh, depending on um, what uh, partnerships we develop over the next several months um, we will we may have people that want to use that for some sort of a, uh, a venue to operate out of. Um, on the top though this is what really uh, we think separates us from everyone else. We have two areas one in the front one in the back that can be used as restaurants, it can be used as microbreweries. I happen to know a guy that runs a microbrewery that, that's pretty <laughs> successful in the area. I'm not going to mention any names. Um, and we have an area for possibly open air uh, movie nights. Um, we have the ability to, uh, what we had envisioned, um, play top golf or something similar out into the fields. All of this from this top area that, uh, that gives us kind of a, a, a view from, uh, from two and a half stories up. On top of that, we have a running track around the outside of it. Um, which is uh, shown in the pink. We have uh, elevators, obviously, to, to get people access to the roof. Um, this is actually a roof structure, which you'll see in the video. That this white area is actually a metal roof structure, which gives some shade, but provides some kind of architectural um, uh, cleanliness that we think is really cool. And this would be kind of an area that, that you could use as a restaurant, something to oversee the, um, the tournaments. Uh, more importantly, it could be something that you can segregate some of the things that are going on. You know, the front two fields that we talked about having, um, having fenced in separately so that we could do beef and beer, wine and food test tastings, uh, music events that we could actually have a kind of a VIP area for people to um, either congregate or meet with coaches if you're a young athlete and we want to get away from the fray so that they can have a, a conversation. All of this can happen up on that top layer as well as some additional seating that, uh, that would be up on top. You'll notice that the, there is kind of a, um, a covering across the windows. This is actually a, a mesh similar to what you would have seen uh, in Disney or in Epcot where uh, you can see through it, but it actually provides shade for uh, some of the people that are walking uh, around the area. At the same time, it's, it's blocking the reflection for the people who are athletes on the field so that we're not getting a reflection of the windows as the night sun goes down or, or the morning sun comes up. Uh, because that is a concern when you have that much glass right uh, adjacent to the uh, to the fields. And this is kind of the the big picture looking back from two. Mike, looking at the, yeah. the I'm I'm, I'm going to say you're calling it the backbone. Uh -huh. The the green that's on top there <clears throat> that's not for sitting or. No, that's actually it's depicted as a um, a green roof, uh, which is uh, a, a grass top roof, and I forget what they what, what 
they call that a garden or a roof, yeah, like a roof garden or um, maybe you guys would have a better clue of that, but it is not turf. <laughs> it is okay. actually grass. And the intent of that of having that green is there are some credits that we could take advantage of for having you know rooftops, um, gardens, and stuff like that that we were thinking about being able to incorporate that to make that track filling and that outdoor space actually feel like an outdoor space rather than sitting on the roof of a building. Gotcha. Um, yeah, too many uh, times when you, you develop these things, next thing all you see at the top is the air conditioners and the air handlers, and, and we're trying to, to, to kind of make this a, a little more uh, inviting. A separate uh, selection, you know, that doesn't have to be all um, coverings that he, uh, he said this, and we could also do wood slats, and I just kind of wanted to show that as an option. We have wood slats on the side of the building instead of that mesh covering. Uh, as far as cost, one or the other, it, it's pretty comparable. It, uh, it's not like one is much more expensive. Uh, you kind of get the idea that it gives it a different look, and from the side, it certainly gives it a different look, but it still blocks that reflection of the glass um, uh, from that second floor. You think that would be more durable than the mesh? You know, I don't know, but uh, but I, I think there will be some more conversations about that as we get closer to see what will last longer, what it's really made of, um, uh, and, and have maybe have some trips where we go see it when we get a little bit closer to it. Because there are places that have incorporated both of these uh, that we know of, and I think I'd like to go see them myself, and I'd invite all of you to come as well. I'd like to go. Um, and you kind of give just a general idea, you know, if, if we're talking about building something that's going to be inviting, if you've ever had travel sports like I have with my kids, and you've gone to places, you're not going to a place that has this kind of amenity in the center of it. You're not going to have the kind of uh, cheesesteaks, crab cakes, crab soup, the things that, that we're known for in Cecil County and that we're able to, to uh, produce here and, and share with people from around the country who are going to want to come here at a quarter of a million visitors a year. And then the final overview, kind of just uh, the, the hotels and, and the, uh, the market that we were talking about with the auditorium, uh, giving a full view of that uh, overlay on top of Blue Earth. So I want to share this with everyone. You know, Brad and I uh, are super excited about it. If you get have just uh, two minutes now, I'm just going to play the video to give you an idea of what that looks like. Just um, envisioning that track, mm -hmm. nice cross-country track. We probably have high schools using it, running. 
was cross country, mm -hmm. just a place for uh, a safe environment for me. So I was just looking at that. How wide is that? Like two, three lanes, or? Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know if we're that quite that far along. And the, as a rendering, we'd, we'd love the idea to get to the actual actual architecture will be, be the next great, step. You know, great. but we I love the ideas, <clears throat> and, and we're happy to incorporate all of them. To be honest, great you know? cross country. Um, uh, I agree. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, so we just wanted to come and say, listen, we're still we're still committed to, to what we said we would do. We've obviously gone, uh, we've gone ahead and, and completed the, the rendering, but we've also started the feasibility study with uh, SMC, which you guys know about. Uh, we had invited you to the meeting as well, and I know Rob had attended uh, on the, uh, the council's behalf. Uh, it's been fantastic. As of now, they're saying we have, uh, they believe we'll have an A rating when we come out of this for both the area, the location, the feasibility, the, the, uh, the, the finance, um, and, and the payback of the bonds. So, we are encouraged by the initial reports. We have a follow-up meeting with them uh, Tuesday of next week, and they're telling us that our feasibility study will be done on January 16th. That'll be the first draft that comes back to us for review. So uh, we're in line. I, I, um, I haven't talked to, uh, to the mayor or anyone recently about where we are in the bond process. I know that you guys are getting rated both for us and for the, the TIF uh, situation. Um, um, maybe we can update on that as well. No, that, that's good. Uh, so your feasibility will be back around January 16th, Correct. which will give us some information of whether, you know, it's the, the right thing to do. But regardless of that, Lou, where do we stand with Davenport and the, in the process? I know that they, did they, did they ask for paperwork from the finance department? Where are we stand at here? I don't know. I've had a contact with them uh, since the uh, last time, so I have to get a hold of them. But we want to we want to really push that process. We we, we want to be rated. Whether whether we move forward with uh, uh, this feasibility, if it comes back bad, but we want to be ready. Do you guys agree with that? I agree. Yeah, I think I think this board up here. I know, uh, could I comment? Yeah. Uh, I know. I just my brain went dead for two seconds. Um, she was waiting for the feasibility study to come back. Okay. That's why uh, we haven't heard from her. She wanted to see that in order to work on the uh, credit rating. Well, that answer that. Maybe uh, we, we need to find out. Does she need anything else from us as we're well, doing? No, but I know that the uh, feasibility study is something we need to look at. Okay. Well, if I could comment. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, well two things, one is we actually committed to paying for that process if we needed to because we understand that they need to be in lockstep in order to hopefully meet the construction schedule that is the beginning of next quarter if it works out well. I realize there are continual delays that occur, but we're hopeful that that, that can hold. Secondly, I don't know if the, feas the feasibility study keeps the town from having to be rated when they're going to, you're looking to do TIF funds or, or whatever it may be. Uh -huh. Uh, so, is there any purpose in delaying it to the feasibility study if we can work in lockstep together? Because well, we're still I, putting quite a bit of money out trying to get to this end game. Yeah. I apologize for interrupting. Can no. I stop sharing? Because oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Something. <laughs> That's okay. There you go. I'll stop the I want to see if there's anybody online sure, there you who go. might be able to answer your questions. I, and right. I wasn't sure if there would be, mm -hmm. but I wanted to That's see if there's anybody there. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, I, I, I think yeah. I'll actually reach out <laughs> to Davenport myself and see where oh, we're at with that. I'll send a link to her and ask her. That she can go forward with the rating. Yeah, we definitely want to go forward with the rating. Whether 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 or not this comes to fruition for us or not, but we definitely need to have that know what that rating is. I mean, we we've, we've uh, done a whole TIF district for the whole town, and we want to make sure that. Uh, I think the point was, if you're bonded, if you get your rating, you could move ahead with your TIF project as well. And, and if this didn't happen for some reason or another, you could. We'll rate. consider that done, and hopefully this will all be done by the time we get the feasibility, right? Right. Yeah, my understanding is that it would be eight weeks uh, for the bond rating if it started not in the middle of the <coughs> So I imagine that we'll be behind the ball again in getting this done. But just, I'll be candid with you, it's frustrating because we are putting a ton of effort and money. Uh, we have settled the property. We are working forward on this just like we committed to. So. Mm -hmm. No, I hear you loud and clear, and I think the board hears you loud and clear. And I think that uh, uh, I, I don't, I, using the words "think," I, I, I know is the wrong word. I I know that this board is 
on board with this project and, and, and the whole project. And uh, we want to see this thing happen. I know there's been a lot of obstacles. I mean, this, the inflation, the, the, the yeah. house building, uh, uh, is a lot of things are coming to uh, somewhat of a halt right now, and, and it concerns me also. It, it, it truly does, you know, but uh, I'm very candid. I'm not a developer by nature, you know that. Yeah. I've been fortunate enough to develop, to, to have uh, successful businesses. Brad as well He's more of a developer than I am. <laughs> but to be candid, when I see the frustration that's going on, we are, the delays that happen, regardless of, of where they stand, regardless of whose fault they are, um, there seems to be a disconnect between your vision, our vision, and getting to the finish line. And I don't. I, I think that we owe it to everyone that's involved in this process to find the fastest, most uh, competent way to get these answers for the team that's involved. I will share with you, and I probably it, it's not with you know it's not my my uh, my project in total. Obviously, I don't stand here representing all the Southfields, but we are in serious danger of losing developers, national developers, because of the delays that are happening here in the town. And they are not normal and not the same as they are everywhere else. They are going to be they're going to be uh, up against it to decide whether to stay here or go to someplace else that's more willing to work with them. And I'm just being candid with you. This is this is Mike Brown, not Ray Jackson. I'm not standing here representing anyone. As a town person who's put his livelihood on, on the line, along with Brad, who have settled property and we're coming to you for help, I think we owe it to each other to find a better way. I really do. I think we need to look at it and find a better way to get it done. I, I think it's too easy to sit back on maybe the way we've done things for 30 years and say that's good enough because I don't believe it is. I think we owe it to each other to do better. Well, listen, I, I appreciate your candor, and uh, uh, I, I really don't know what to say about that uh, from what you just that's stated. Right. I think we can work together outside of this meeting to do that maybe, but I, uh, the frustration is real. The, the money that we're going to have to pay on the special tax district now because of the delays that are now going to cost millions, not not hundreds of thousands, not tens of thousands, millions. Um, the interest rates and the housing that we're missing because of how long things are taking, regardless of who, we're not, not pointing fingers, I'm saying we all owe it to each other to make a better job out of this. So I'll get off my soapbox, I apologize. Yeah, listen, it's, uh, we're a team, and, and, and we have to make sure, I mean, this is a vision of this board, and we're going to make it happen. And uh, I can commit to you, as I'm sitting here, I'll speak for the board here a little bit. Uh, I'll put the finger on a, a few of these things to uh, see where we need to go. Because I think the communication in general needs to be better. And I think we're getting better. I mean, we are getting better. But we do want it done. Yeah. And we're here. But, you know, we're at the table. We're, we're willing to do the legwork. We're willing to you know, front and pay for some of those things to expedite some of that. If, uh, and, and if there's anything that anybody needs from any one of us, just let us know. We're, 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 we're here. We're accessible. We're here. We're ready to meet with you anytime you want. There's no time we can't come here and meet with you. We're five minutes down the road. Yep. Uh, and, and to solve problems or anything we can do to make things happen faster, uh, it, it just should not be this difficult. Very good. And yeah, you bring up a, a, a very good point because I often go to Middletown and, and see a friend of mine who's in the uh, assisted living facility. But over this past year, you go and you see where there's going to be a house. You want to see a house. And eventually, you see the houses going up. And I keep saying to myself, the houses are going up, but there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. But then you go another couple of weeks, then you see somebody has moved in, somebody has moved in, and then you got a, a, a field. Yep. And then all of a sudden you see a school going up. Mm -hmm. And you see a few vehicles out there, they're working, and now all of a sudden there's a school. So somewhere along the line in the process I mentioned, there's been a cooperation because you see one, you see the next, you see the next, and you see the next. And obviously there's people moving in from the outside, so somebody's doing a job of getting those individuals there exactly. to fruition for you know both sides or wherever they may be. And I will tell you that us as people living in the county, you as the commissioners and the mayor, I know you've asked the developers, national developers, to come to the table and do the same things they're doing in Westchester and Middletown and in Newark. But we're not helping them do it. We are not helping them do it. That's just my that's my opinion. And I think that we can do a better job of helping facilitate that and make it successful for us. Because at some point, 
We're all going to be left here. And we need to do a better job of helping each other. And certainly you don't want any shortfalls in that process because it's to be like where you say you are now. Yep, exactly. So what would be our next step? And where do we go from here to expedite or... Uh, well, there's, there's uh, of course, you know, let alone the... Uh, uh, Process. I mean, you got a lot of processes. Uh, you go through the planning commission. Uh, that has to happen. Sure. Uh, you got to follow the rules and the regulations. That has to happen. But I think that what we can uh, attempt to do, and and I'm not, is to communicate. I mean, to communicate. And you know, uh, I would I would say this thing with the bond rating. We're going to move forward with that. I mean, I felt we were moving forward with it. I didn't know that. We were waiting on the feasibility study to come back, but that's okay. We're on it today. Uh, but I think that I would ask, I would almost ask you guys to come back at least every other meeting and give us an update on where, where things are, and we'll give you an update on where we're at. And, yeah. and I think that with the whole project, I would, uh, I, I don't see, uh, I see some representatives uh, of Southfields on there, but I think it's always good to come in every other week and give us a, an update. I know that. Uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about where the water tower is. I'd like to know where we stand, what our obstacles are on the road, the boulevard going in. And uh, these are all important for all of us. Uh, but I, my, I, I feel your pain because I knew as soon as these interest rates started going up, it, it throws a uh, little bit of a uh, wrinkle in the sheet, per se, and, and it has. And uh, it's a lot more money. And I know we talked about those bonds earlier for the special taxing district. I remember seeing the initial paperwork where it was uh, just a couple percent, but I think that everyone that uh, knows a little bit about finance knows that those bonds, mm -hmm. the interest on those bonds are going to have to be several points higher, yep. which uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's probably another four or five million dollars to the people that live in that district. That could have been invested elsewhere that we could have used here to help our community mm -hmm. that we're not going to be paying to a bank and there's no reason to do that yeah we could do it better together if we just figured a better way but if we just sit on the same thing we've been doing it's going to delay and delay and delay and we're going to end up with travel pro being across the street without the things that we are committed to do which is the sports park and the house and I, I, i'm scared that that would happen and i don't want that to happen as a taxpayer mm -hmm. and a person who is a business <clears throat> No, I don't think it. I, I know that we don't want that to happen. We don't want that to happen. No. no. Any other comments or questions? <laughs> no, I think that's fine. Huh? Thank you. Uh, we are small businesses, so please come out on Saturday and see Brad. All right, very right good. <laughs> and listen, I want to let you know on another note. Uh, 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 of course, I I uh, really do appreciate both you guys and and the uh, other businesses that you uh, provide to the town. Uh, Brad, I can tell you that uh, our downtown was, uh, there's some struggles there, and uh, you committed, and you put in a brewery. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that commitment, and uh, it was a huge commitment. And thank you for that. And Mike, uh, you know, I came to you guys uh, about Patriots Glen with uh, it going up for auction. And uh, quite frankly, you stepped up. Uh, you acquired a, a parcel of land, a golf course that was struggling, and uh, if anyone hasn't been out there in a while, it's you're killing it, man. I mean, you've done, it's, you know, going back to the, you know, my, one of my favorite words, the Disney S. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the quality of this, mm -hmm. looking at what's been happening at Elk River, looking at what's happening at Patriots Lane Golf Course, there is no question. What the final product's going to be on that sports box? There's none. We agree. There's none. And you're right. You're, anyone that's been involved in travel sports, uh, I think I'm trying to think of the individual's name that I recently spoke to. The dollars are even going up more, even during these times. Okay. The parents are spending more of their dollars. Into this, uh, into the, into this. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I think it's going to continue. When well, you got great coaches like Commissioner Gibbons, you're right about that. <laughs> Moore, uh, I can't say much about Earl, but uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs>
He's not going to say anything? No, 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 no. he's better than kidding. No, I <laughs> well, I don't know about all that now. Wait a second here. I'm not even going to compare myself. Okay. Well, listen, thank you guys so much for coming, and thank you for uh, sharing that with us. And, and I know you're investing a lot of money, and I, I, I feel it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, where are we at here? Uh, nothing new for me to report, Commissioner Gibbons? Commissioner Potter? Yeah, I have an update for the Parks and Rec, um, for um, the update for fall 2022. Neighborhood Community Center has been uh, very busy with a lot of activities for the ages of the youth and the adults. Um, their facilities have been a lot of rentals. Our fall and um, upcoming programs include programs for the toddlers, craft sports, cooking, uh, the youth for painting, crafts, science, um, and the senior crafts. They have the bingo and dance. Over 20 classes each week, uh, open gym for basketball, open gym for volleyball, and uh, youth basketball league are over 200 youth reg registered. Um, for the fall. Our um, weekends and many uh, weeknights are already busy with a number of rentals, birthday parties, and baby showers. We also um, welcome the Judy Center playgrounds twice a week, the infants and toddlers programs as needed, the senior exercise classes. They have the um, uh, karate, tai chi, and line dancing offered by the Cecil County Healthy uh, healthy op option programs for seniors twice a week. And then a uh, um, kinship support group with the Cecil County Department of Social Service and um, after school programs ran by the Boys and Girls Club uh, every day after school. And uh, we are continuing to work with the community organization to uh, provide services to our residents and we'll continue to expand our programs offering to meet the needs of the community. So they've really been active all summer long, really, um, but now um, uh, the, the needs of the community. So I want to thank Mary McCall and her staff for, um, for actually handling all these different obstacles through the summer. Appreciate your report. Yep. Thank you. And Jimmy does a great job on he gets the opportunity to make the uh, floor a little spick and span. So I don't know whether your report included that. I don't know how often he does that. But it's nothing like going into a gym, Lords, or something like looking at the floor. It makes a difference. I, I have to tell you, I, I saw the floor, and uh, it looked brand new again. Right. And better than brand new, actually, once you throw that uh, wax on it. It looked fantastic. It'll be in great shape for the hosting the uh, thank you event. Rob? The only thing I have is we discussed when we first started today that we met with Chris Beeman, is it? From Underwood? Yes. Thank you. I beg your pardon. And um, John and Michael, I appreciate you guys joining us yesterday and taking that walk along the creek with us. It was very educational. Uh, the young man has got some very sound ideas to help to control our flooding. Uh, we have a lot more discussion, you know, but uh, it, it does look promising. That's all I have. Very good. Just a reminder, uh, the Town of Elton has a decorating contest. The deadline to register is 12-16, and the winners will be announced a week later, a little less than a week later, on 12-21. But it would be great that if more people got involved in the decorating. And I would say any of our small businesses wanted to decorate, uh, we could come out and include you in the uh, contest. It'd be great. All right, this is the uh, time we open up the meeting uh, for anyone that has anything to say for the good of the town of Elton. Anyone? Pat, you have anything you got to say today? Well, now that you asked, uh, I just want to congratulate Rob beautiful article in the week about scouting. Oh, thanks. That was done very, very well. I, I think the author is sitting two seats behind you. Oh, that was not me. Oh, it wasn't? Well, I was going to give you a good plug here, Matt. <laughs> I appreciate it. Right? All right. Right. Carl Hamilton did it? <clears throat> Carl did, yeah. Very good. Thank nice you. Nice article. Thank you for that comment. Thank you.
Anyone on our Zoom meeting have anything to say? Uh, Dan, are you listening? I see you're out there. Maybe. Hey, hey, real quickly, uh, how's the uh, the trash going at this point? We are, we're progressing. We've actually made improvements, but there's always room for improvement. So it's a, it's a, it's a little bit learning curve, but what we're seeing out there, actually we checked out this morning, like a lot of neighborhoods are looking really well, which really surprised us. So we got some successes. We got some we can do a little bit better, but you know, we run the gap. Very good. And Rob, I want to let you know that even Dan Hanley does a good job because every Monday he's calling bingo for the senior citizen. And it was real nice to walk in there this past Monday to see him in there. He had as much fun as they did. So it was nice to see the town giving back um, as employees. Very good. Thank you, Dan. I didn't know that. You know the jokes. It's all about the jokes. They love them. All right. I hear you. And I see one of our newest employees, Quinn. Are you on there? Are you listening to us? I am listening. Fantastic. Are you still enjoying your job here at the town of Elton? I am. Fantastic. We're glad to have you on board. Okay. This is the, uh, no one else has anything to say. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.